Our guest in the studio is U.S. Attorney uh, Darren Lamarca and also uh, Special Agent in Charge, uh, Jermica Fomby. And it is a pleasure having both of you fine gentlemen very, very much. It has been a while since we've had the Special Agent. For Micah, it is not for Micah, it's for Mika, isn't it? Uh, it's Jermica. It always is for Micah. No, Jermica. <laughs> Jermica, I am sorry, sir. That's okay. It, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's been a long morning already. So there you go. And also the uh, U.S. Attorney uh, Darren Lamarca. And I, I'm hoping Darren, I got that one right. Did I? You did. You did. Thank you. Hey, it's good to see both of you, gentlemen. Let me uh, let me read a little bit to get the, the launch here. U.S. Attorney Darren Lamarca and Special Agent uh, in charge. Uh, and again, you said Jamaica or Jamaica? Uh, it's Jamaica, but don't worry. The uh, you said the eagle flies today, so as long as the eagle flies for my <laughs> his mind right, I'm I'm fine with it. No worries. I'm I'm, I'm going to say special agent in charge <laughs> of Formby, a Formby, and I'll probably screw that up too. Federal Bureau of Investigation. Anyway, Jackson Field Office, and uh, it's good to have you here, sir. According to the Jackson Field Office of the FBI, local law enforcement with a presence in the Tri County area have agreed to devote officers to the efforts of V Grip. Uh, the additional officers will be supplementing the work of Jackson Police Department the, uh, and assist the JPD in the investigation of violent crime occurring in the city with a view toward prosecution in federal court. So, gentlemen, first of all, I- anybody jump in here. What does VGRIP stand for? Uh, it stands for a Violent Gun Reduction Interdiction Program. Mm-hmm. And uh, you were... This working relationship, uh, tell me a little bit about that. Uh, You know, it's one that is significant, to say the least. Uh, It is a very collaborative effort that is uh, built around the prosecution abilities of the the, uh, U.S. Attorney's Office, uh, Mm -hmm. and it incorporates uh, or encompasses, as you mentioned, JPD, uh, Hines County Sheriff's Department. Of course, my organization, our other federal organizations in the area, uh, and then a lot of support from the uh, suburban areas around around this, the community, which is uh, Rankin County Sheriff's Department is a key player. Uh, Madison PD uh, have been assisting as well. And then a lot of the other uh, municipalities will contribute to uh, whether it's traditional task force assistance or uh, just for this ad hoc uh, initiative that we're pushing forward to. Uh, with, is, you know, is- is this the first time this has happened as far as this partnership, or have this, uh, have this been in, in formation before? Well, uh, Paul, I can speak to that. Um, mm-hmm. In my last 15 years, this is the the first time that we've had such a uh, comprehensive collaborative effort. As you may know, um, the FBI and other federal agencies do have standing task forces, which do uh, include certain officers from um, other agencies or other local mm-hmm. law enforcement but in this case, we've received a commitment of uh, a large number of additional officers that are here to, under the authority of the FBI, to uh, respond to criminal acts that are occurring within the city of Jackson, as well as the surrounding area, if necessary. Are, are these additional officers on the streets in the offices, are they plain clothes? Are they dressed to JPD or um, both? Uh, you have a, a combination. Um, so you will have mm-hmm. uh, marked unit presence, uh, uniform presence, which is easily identifiable. Uh, but you also will have uh, individuals that are in plain clothes that are out operating. Uh, but if there's any enforcement action, then uh, even in plain clothes, then they are identified through... Uh, having official markings to identify that they're law enforcement so people know what the actions gotcha. that are happening. Yeah. Are th- those are paid for by the federal government, or is it the JPD or the state government pay for that, or is it a combination of uh, both? Uh, it's a combination of both. So we have, as Mr. Lamarca mentioned earlier, the FBI mm-hmm. has a tradition of having task forces, and so individuals who, uh, who belong to our official task forces uh, there is additional compensation and benefits that go along with that. Mm-hmm. However, uh, for those that are just participating in uh, in attempting to resolve this issue, then those are uh, funded and supported by the local municipalities. Um, so again, as a common, as you mentioned, a combination of both. Mm-hmm. The was this 
akin to maybe traveling nurses. This is our, these are they they are uh, part time or how, how do you where do you get these guys and gals? I would imagine where do you get them? So together, I think that um, it has been a tremendous uh, collaboration between the, the uh, law enforcement leadership here in the area, both at the federal and the local level, uh, and so. Uh, is done through a strategic approach. Um, we identify based upon trends of of when crimes happen, the types of crimes that happen, where they happen, uh, and then we do orchestrate it. Uh, uh, emissions and, and uh, um, you know op- operations that are going out to try to identify these things and break them down. So yeah. uh, it goes to the leadership that's here uh, between the you know JPD and Hines County as well as Rankin County uh, and other municipalities to uh, to identify a plan and we execute those plans based upon those. Uh, that communication. How, how and by the way, U.S. Attorney Southern uh, District is Darren Lamar, uh, Lamarca, and, and then Darren, you're not a stranger. You are a hometown boy for the most part to the metro area. That's true. I uh, reside and have for 30 something years in Clinton, mm-hmm. and uh, this is my home. And I welcome Mr. Fombe and his uh, his attitude, and it's it's inspiring and uh, to see the other. Uh, local law enforcement uh, officers and agencies uh, come together because, as we've all said in so many years, you know, what affects our capital city affects us all. It does. We had a report just a few moments ago that I was reading about the 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 one of the busts of Franken County as far as some stolen vehicles. But I mean, this has become a hotbed of crime. And when we start looking per population at where we stand in Jackson, our capital city, it's embarrassing. And uh, the thing that that and I'm I, I don't want to put this in a negative way, but we hear about these press conferences uh, almost on an annual basis, if not no, on a quarterly basis. Here's what we've got together to fight crime, and we're all hoping this is going to be different. And uh, tell us why, Darren, this is going to be different. Well, we have I think uh, great communication and collaboration among uh, the various sub uh, suburban municipalities. Mm-hmm. Um, the tri-county area uh, with regard to the sheriff's offices. Uh, that collaboration was uh, forged. Um, I give great credit to Mr. Fombe for doing so. And it brings additional, of course, simple to say additional manpower, mm-hmm. but additional thoughts and efforts on everyone's part to respond to these criminal acts, to take these criminals uh, into custody and to prosecute them through the federal judicial system uh, which is a little bit more uh, onerous i believe on the criminal and um, hopefully that will deter as well as prevent uh, crimes in the future yeah is is it speedier also because we have had a backlog regardless of where it is 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 it is it speedier oh no doubt uh, from the date of arrest, and and I say that once you are taken into mm-hmm. federal custody, uh, we have 30 days to indict, and then we have 70 days to trial. Uh, those can be continued at yeah. the defense request, but many times that's not uh, granted. I want to ask both of you gentlemen to be open and apostolic with me when we come back. And, and when you took a look at this and you were putting all of this together, one of the things you do at the FBI, one of the things you do at the at the U.S. Attorney's Office is identify the problems. What were the problems? Are they being solved? I know in the press conference you said the stats are showing violent crime is down. I want to hear about that, and we'll talk more with these two fine gentlemen whose names I have botched, but I'm using that as a mulligan this morning. Back with more coming up next. I see. Um, Miss Madden didn't come with you folks, did she? Yes, she did. Would (laughs) would you just say a a hello? I haven't seen her in a month of Sundays. I I think a timeline on that would be 12 special agents ago. She's uh, waving. (laughs) So uh, hello to to Miss Madden there. It's been a long time. Um, we're talking with uh, U.S. Attorney Darren Lamarca and also Jermica Fomby from the special agent in charge. And we were, uh, we were talking about this partnership. And it is truly a partnership. I don't know who put this thing together. I'm sure you guys did. But, and uh, I could, it's everybody from the Byron Police Department, Reservoir, Simpson County, Hines County Sheriff's Office, the, um, 
Alcohol Beverage Control, Bureau of Investigation, it goes on and on and on. How is the communication done? In, and are you guys, were we able to put that together technology-wise? And, and I know we did as far as everybody signing on to it. But how does that uh, how does that work as far as the when you stay in touch and what you what what you what you actually communicate um, on a regular basis about? Right. So good question. I uh, I would say it's constant and it's fluid. Uh, the uh, communication uh, happens at different levels. So at the executive mm-hmm. level, with the uh, Mr. Lamarca and I, along with the other agency heads, uh, but then the uh, boots on the ground who are really axing this initiative. Uh, those uh, first line leaders uh, and investigators are constantly involved, sharing information and intelligence, uh, ensuring that everybody knows and understands what's happening. Uh, and then we all come together when there's a time to uh, go out and do operations. And then additionally, just uh, just for the big picture of it all, we have large meetings uh, which uh, have been facilitated uh, recently by uh, Sheriff Bailey over in Rankin County, who has uh, hosted us to uh, have these discussions. So it's uh, it it varies, but it's but it's consistent and constant. During did you guys talked about it in the press conference bringing new technologies? Is that can you speak to that? I'm I don't I don't want you to give away anything that we shouldn't know as far as the crooks are concerned. But when you talk about new technologies, is that something that the FBI had that we don't have, and the the, the most of the the local police departments and municipalities do not have? Paul, we have uh, <laughs> anybody. Don't, don't don't talk over each other now. Well, Come on. <laughs> there, there's there's there are things we want to talk about, and there are things yeah. that we we can't talk about. Uh, well. So uh, we do have um, tools within the federal arsenal that we mm-hmm. can um, we can employ um, with regard to types of surveillance. Um, you know, with uh, uh, the digital era in, in which we now live, there's uh, that surveillance can can take so many different forms, and um, we we're using that surveillance as well as um, crime scene uh, data to to help direct us where we need mm-hmm. to be when we need to be there. Yeah, some of the frustration and and um, and I and I I know the audience has felt it from me over the uh, last several weeks, well, f- few months now. We have people talking about, you know, let's put more basketball goals up. Let's let's do this, the midnight basketball thing, which probably does nothing but attract gang members to uh, innocent kids. Uh, it, it didn't work out the last time, wouldn't work out this time. We had the Houston mayor yesterday asking the criminals, please uh, just stay at home during COVID, and then when COVID's over, we'll get back with you, which is absolutely stupid. We, um, we look at the things that have worked, places like New York and other spots, stop and frisk. Uh, or roadblocks, or community involvement, or cameras, and uh, you you just can't have a news conference and say we're going to put a partnership together without doing the things that you guys have possibly done. But I do want to ask you, where did you find the problems in the Jackson metro area that enable crime to flourish like it did? Well, Well, I'm sorry. sorry, Go ahead. All right. Uh, Paul, our, uh, our job at the U.S. Attorney's Office is, and I say this as long as I'm U.S. Attorney, is to prosecute crime. That is the job that we take seriously. It is the job that we will undertake um, with all due diligence Mm -hmm. from our investigative agencies who bring us cases, whether it be the FBI, the DEA, the ATF, Secret Service. We will prosecute those cases the reasons behind crime, we will leave, or I will, to the sociologists, to the behavioral specialists. But if you commit a crime, we're going to prosecute you if we catch you. And this is an effort to actually do that part. We're doing our part in uh, satisfying no. or trying to prevent crime from occurring. I understand, but as an attorney and, and a native Mississippian, did you have you take did you find the court system here lacking as far as funding or structure? Is that part of it? I think the uh, the court system in the state level is uh, overburdened, mm-hmm. um, and I think it's it's 
it's fair to say that um, that if we're going to incarcerate people and if we need a court system that will uh, deter, we have to fund that, and it, it requires yeah. it requires that. Do you think this is going to take some of the pressure, or at least a little pressure, off of that? Yes, I do. When you said that violent crime is down, give me some stats on that one, either one of you. What? Yeah, let's say a couple of things. So one of the things that has been significantly a concern within the metro area has been carjacking. So, um, you know, to date, so reported carjackings in December, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. January were 14, uh, and we had reduced that down to two as of last reporting uh, for the press conference at the end of week last week. Uh, now, there's a possibility that – uh, that those numbers could go up, um, you know, in the month, and we just were below average. But I think that this is a direct impact. Uh, and, again, that's a significant concern because uh, when you're in your vehicles, uh, it's probably when you're the most vulnerable because you're not – you don't have the same type of, of uh, vigilance uh, there. So I think that is that is a significant stat, and it just goes into a match to the other reductions. Uh, the other thing is is that uh, since our teams have been out, the uh, you will you will the numbers have gone down with the homicides mm-hmm. and, and actual shootings, uh, especially for those that are, that deal with street crime. Uh, I think what's really important, and this goes back to some of the things that you mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Gallo, is that the you talk about the feeling in the community. So these stats validate what we're doing. However, I think the biggest validation is uh, people beginning to feel safer in the streets uh, and feel f- safer in the community, and more so. Uh, you know, having, uh, as you described earlier, having previously uh, quarterly or annual con- press conferences that just talked about the plans, but nothing yeah. really came to fruition. So now you see those things that are starting to occur. And so the, we're asking f- to be held accountable. We're looking to be accountable to uh, to you, to your listeners, uh, to other members of the community to go out and make a difference and make the community safer. When you look at the repeat offenders, and again, one of the things, uh, Darren, we've seen for so long, a lot of these guys should be in prison. Number one, even if they don't have an outstanding warrant, many of them have uh, uh, should have because they're carrying weapons that uh, they're illegally. They shouldn't have it with some uh, infraction on them. How, how do what are you what are you going to do to address that? We will prosecute. Each of those, uh, we, we are getting the word out <clears throat> through through you, through uh, mm-hmm. press conferences, that if you do possess a firearm and you're prohibited, we find out. We will arrest you. We will take you federally through the federal system. As you may know, Paul, the federal system, you serve day for day. If you behave while you're incarcerated, mm-hmm. you serve 85% of your time. You get a 15% break. And that's if you behave while you're incarcerated. There is no 50% rule. There is no 25% rule. And one more thing I want to say in reference to your prior question, we look at those carjacking statutes because we don't think carjacking can be attributed to interpersonal relationships uh, that causes that crime. These are uh, crimes of opportunity, and we do see to this point that they have decreased. Gentlemen, I'll give you a chance for final thoughts when we return. Collect your thoughts carefully and make sure you don't reveal anything. If you want to reveal something, that's okay also. You're going to do some roadblocks or things like that? Give us the locations if you want to. Make them up. I don't care. We'll do that. You know, the Highway segment. Patrol never does that, right? They <laughs> never have. Uh, we'll be back uh, with more next. PM this afternoon. Let me get back to our guest in the studio for the final thoughts from U.S. Attorney, Southern District, the new U.S. Attorney, Darren LaMarca, and also FBI Special Agent in Charge, Jackson, Mississippi, Jermica Fomby. And uh, neither of you are uh, virgins anymore. When we come back, we'll have all of this name thing taken care of. But final thoughts from the FBI uh, Special Agent in Charge. Uh, Thank you very much, sir. So I would just say that... um, you know, as you mentioned earlier about the communication and how we're doing things, I think the communication is and will be the key uh, to what we do in the future. Uh, this is something that is uh, going to ensure that uh, that we're looking at very strategic approaches to addressing the rise in violent crime uh, here in the greater Jackson area. But we're also looking to do the same things throughout the state uh, in both the Southern District here, here with Mr. LaMarca, as well as the Northern District uh, with Mr. Yeah. Clay Joyner. Uh, but it's focus and 
Uh, I would just like to thank uh, your listeners and the other people in the community for having patience uh, and having faith in what we're doing uh, because we're going to deliver uh, because we're committed to this just as you're committed to having a safer community. We're committed to doing our part to uh, help lead and provide uh, that safe community. One of the things we found in the, in the people in the metro area in Jackson, Mississippi, and, uh, and some of our African-American uh, uh, brothers and sisters there are they're good people, but they're scared. Of, they're scared to death. A lot of them. And I'm not sure how you guys are centering on the gang activity. I know you have it well uh, identified, but not only here in other parts of the state. But are, are gangs um, um, a, a certain percentage of this element that, that we're dealing with, that you guys are dealing with? Well, I, you know, the uh, so gangs are a part of this, um, mm-hmm. you know, without speaking specific numbers or stats. The, uh, you know, there is the traditional gangs, as you would, you know, term as gangs, but also just criminal enterprises uh, where mm-hmm. individuals are collectively using, uh, you know, their collaborative approaches to... Uh, you know, committing uh, mm. crime against community, um, you know, and then you also have individual actors. So there's a combination of, of individuals who are uh, who are having nefarious uh, activity that is uh, that is negatively impacting the community, and those yeah. are individuals that we're rooting out. New Southern um, U.S. Attorney Darren Lamarca, your final thoughts, sir? Um, thank you. I, I, I'm excited. I say excited is probably not the right word. Um, um, confident that the efforts we're taking now will have a, uh, a beneficial impact on uh, combating crime. Uh, mm-hmm. We believe that through the efforts of all of us, those inside the metro area uh, will, will benefit from this. And I think other leaders uh, believe the same way, just actually through their actions of um, uh, providing officers to this effort. Um, and for that reason, we'll take those uh, who are apprehended and take them through federal court, which I hope will give the public confidence in what we're doing. And uh, as uh, Chief Davis has said of JPD, the information that we get many times comes from witnesses on the street. Mm-hmm. We want those witnesses to be aware that when the, the criminal goes through the federal system, nine out of ten times that criminal will not be on the street until he's had his trial and either acquitted or found guilty and sentenced to serve time. I understand. I would imagine if this is successful, and you may already have uh, some requests from the Pine Belt area and on the coast, so it could be expanded uh, that far south. Yes, yes, we uh, this this I guess this model uh, is our prototype. Um, we are expecting uh, good results from it, mm-hmm. and we do intend because, as we've all said, crime knows no uh, no borders. Crime is occurring and has gone up throughout the country. Uh, really, no area is. Uh, isolated from that so uh, we'll we'll take this this model and use it where needed i think one of the best things to do as far as how we can help in this audience and uh, how i can help from this microphone is when you guys have made a rest uh, and we we, we kind of get a benchmark we know uh if we let people know that this is happening it helps improve the confidence of the people who want that help and it deteriorates the confidence of the pe- confidence of the people who are arrested and who need to be arrested. So stay in touch with us. Uh, I'm sure Endeavor does a good job of that one, but always um, send us some information. We would be more than glad to get that out to help in this um, uh, in this campaign called the V Grip. We we thank you guys very very much and uh, stay in touch with us. Thank you guys.